Well, there's this quote which is that um, a small group of concerned citizens can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. And I think the same way is true in healthcare of um, you know physicians and healthcare professionals and individuals when they're put together in a collective can do a lot to improve healthcare. Have you ever wondered if the only way to raise money for your startup or to fund an idea is to get venture capital? Think again. Today on the Digital Health Entrepreneurship Show, we talk about how that isn't the only and probably isn't even the best way to raise money for your startup. So many healthcare entrepreneurs are really keen to chase funding for their ideas from venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. And I'm really curious, like, why do you think that's a bad idea? Like, why isn't Fruit Street chasing after that, that, that funding option? I think that venture capitalists are exclusively, in many cases, focused on profit rather than on social impact. And the problem with that in healthcare is that healthcare is supposed to be about helping people. It's not supposed to be about charging as much money as possible. I mean, many hospitals have a 1% profit margin, or many of them even lose money and are funded by the government. So when you're raising your prices, it's automatically you know, damaging patient care in many cases. And so I think that in healthcare, it can't exclusively be a for-profit business. It has to be something that obviously is sustainable. You know, you can't have a hospital that goes out of business, for example, because then it can't help anyone. But it should be closer to break even rather than being hugely profitable like a company like Facebook or Google where venture capitalists are used to huge profit margins. And so... In many ways, um, venture capitalists are looking for nonlinear revenue where you know, it's just a software product that explodes, but they're not very good at investing in healthcare services, in my opinion, which is actually linear revenue. And so I just think that um, venture capitalists tend to be too focused on profit rather than social impact. And they also just don't have the experience that physicians have on the front lines. I mean, why would a healthcare entrepreneur want advice from a venture capitalist that sits in spreadsheets all day rather than a physician who actually takes care of real patients with real medical issues and has that frontline healthcare experience and took the Hippocratic oath, went to medical school for the right reasons. Um, You probably need to do less due diligence on a physician than you do on a venture capitalist because most physicians are pretty good in terms of their intentions and desire to help society. And Fruit Street you know, founded in 2014, has been you know, almost exclusively funded by physicians. How did you go about getting your first physician investors? Well, I think the first I just met through my own personal network at Harvard, at the Harvard Innovation Lab. But then I enjoyed that first experience of working with a physician so much uh, that I ultimately wanted to attract more of them. So I started reaching out through LinkedIn to physicians. And I would actually just have one-on-one conversations with hundreds of physicians and would just share with them, not necessarily how we were going to be super profitable, but just what the product vision and the social mission of the company was. And I quickly discovered that they were equally frustrated with healthcare and they were looking to do something entrepreneurial to have an impact. And just so our listeners, listeners know, like what type of physicians generally are we talking about? What kinds of physicians are investing in Fruit Street? I believe we have every medical specialty as an investor, except for dermatologists. So we won't analyze that, why that is. But, you know, I mean, I think like the most popular ones would be cardiology, emergency medicine, internal medicine, surgeons, um, those kind of specialties. But we really have everything because I think that physicians in all specialties of healthcare are interested in entrepreneurship, innovation, and improving healthcare. So... Getting back to the idea of um, you know, Fruit Street not being particularly interested in you know, raising any funds from venture capitalists. In terms of you know, all of your main investors in Fruit Street being physicians, is this a classic example of uh, skin in the game? You know, so what, what are the benefits and drawbacks of you know, physicians having skin in the game, so to speak? Well, they're more interested in helping the company succeed. But, I mean, venture capitalists also have skin in the game. I think the benefit with the physicians is that you can get their advice and input, which is very valuable because they're on the front lines of healthcare. So we have an online discussion forum set up where the physicians can give their input and feedback. And 
Actually, we have physicians that are not even investors. They just volunteer. They don't own any equity in the company. They don't get paid. And they just want to improve healthcare. So they're just volunteering their time to give input to software engineers and business people. Unfortunately, most business people in healthcare don't care what physicians think. So anytime a business person in healthcare cares about what a physician thinks, they're probably going to be very successful. So, so what's, some, what's an example of you know, the physician's involvement? Um, are they involved in developing Fruit Street's products, involved in testing it? Yeah, of, course, of course, they're following along, but like how involved are they in the developing and testing? Well, I update them multiple times per day through Basecamp, which is our discussion forum. So it might be a question about how much do you think physicians should get paid to do a telemedicine consult? Or we might do a real-time design session where we ask them what they think about the user experience. Or it might be that they're giving us advice on uh, you know, a clinical trial we're thinking about doing or a grant that we're applying for. Or they might make a helpful introduction to a potential customer or share a real experience of a patient interaction that they had. So it's really kind of like this feedback loop, um, but also this medical think tank where they really just help in any way possible. But uh, it's almost like having a giant board of directors of physicians, except they you know, function as an advisory board where they're giving you advice from the medical side, but they're also trusting you as an entrepreneur to make the final business decision at the end of the day. It's uh, mid-April 2020. And you know, coronavirus and COVID nineteen have only been, you know, in the public consciousness for a few months now. How and you've been developing along with uh, you know, dozens of software developers and so forth, Fruit Street's COVID MD product. Like, how have physicians been specifically involved in developing, testing, and so forth COVID MD? Well, Fruit Street just hired probably the most famous design and user experience firm in the world called the IDO, which actually designed the first. Apple Mouse. And so one of the things IDEO is doing this week is to actually interview physicians about you know, their fears and hopes for the product. As we develop the product, we will actually show the physicians the user interface, find out what's important to them, and um, we will then get their feedback on an ongoing basis. So Lawrence, you know, what sort of what sort of numbers are we talking about here? How much can you raise you know, from physicians? Is there a limit? You know, tell us about that. Well, so far we've raised about $20 million from 300 physicians over the last six years. And I actually don't think there's a limit regarding how much capital you can raise from physicians or individuals. Um, you know, there's 3 million accredited investors in the U.S., I believe. There's people that make over $200,000 a year, which are typically people that can write $25,000, $50,000, and $100,000 checks. And uh, if you just think about it, you know, how much money do we really need to make this a big company? I mean, let's say we raise $50 million. So that could be as simple as having 500 physicians invest $100,000 or 1,000 physicians invest $50,000. And we have physicians that are invested a million dollars. So I think that for a software company, raising $50 million from physicians is entirely possible. But unfortunately, a lot of entrepreneurs think they need venture capital money for that. Sure, if you're building a, a car factory or a company like Tesla or a pharmaceutical drug, you might need to raise billions of dollars and maybe the physician funding model just gets you off the ground, but it's not a long-term strategy. But if you're building a software product, you could probably raise 25 or $50 million from physicians, get their advice, and then make the company profitable or even have an IPO. So I think that the sky's the limit. And a lot of these physicians use an IRA or a 401k to invest, which is actually the same place that many venture capital firms get their money from, you know, pension funds, that kind of thing. Um, and so you're just kind of skipping the middleman, which is the venture capital firm. I mean, the venture capital firms are really just getting paid to essentially aggregate capital from individuals into a fund. But why do you need that? Why can't you just disintermediate that through the internet and the power of platforms like LinkedIn and just do it yourself and through the entrepreneur? So do you have any uh, specific stories about what you've heard from physician investors of how much they've loved you know, being part of the process, you know, being part of this you know, amazing company that's you know, doing, or doing all this digital health work? Well, I just see it every day, just hundreds of posts. I mean, I had one physician recently that invested another $400,000 and he quit his job at his hospital recently to work for full time and 
he said that um, fruit tree was the only thing that was keeping his passion for medicine alive um, because unfortunately a lot of these hospital administrators and traditional business executives in healthcare, they just don't really care what the physicians think and they're not designing the healthcare system in a way that the physicians are enjoying the experience. So uh, you know, what are physician investors focused on? Are they focused on getting equity? Are they focused on getting return? Like, what's, what, are they, what are some of the stories they're telling you? I mean, I think they're all investing because they believe in what we're doing and that it will actually have a social impact and improve patient care. But from a financial perspective, they're not investors that want to lose money. I mean, they obviously want to return on investment, but many of them have a long-term approach, maybe even a longer-term horizon than a venture capital firm. I mean, a lot of venture capital funds have 10-year fund cycles, which means in a 10-year time period, they need to have all of their companies have an exit and get acquired. But let's say you have a physician that's, you know, 35 or 40 years old, and they invest $100,000 from their IRA. I mean, it's money they can't touch, say, until they're 65, right? So actually, they're perfectly fine with this being a 25-year investment because it's money they can't touch until they retire anyway. So I think another nice part about that is the physicians have a longer term time horizon, which probably aligns better with healthcare, where, where things take a very long time in healthcare. I mean, some people say that it takes 20 years to have a new healthcare idea become mainstream. So that probably aligns up better with physicians investing through retirement funds rather than a venture capital firm that has a 10 year cycle in many ways. So, so in closing, Lawrence, you know, obviously Fruit Street is no longer a startup. You know, perhaps a lot of people incorrectly think you are, but Fruit Street's been around since 2014. So in closing, you know, what would your encouragement be to young startups in the healthcare industry, you know, starting to look for investment? What are some tips you have? Well, there's this quote, which is that um, a small group of concerned citizens can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. And I think the same way is true in healthcare of, um, you know, physicians and healthcare professionals and individuals when they're put together in a collective can do a lot to improve healthcare. So I'd maybe think about how do you organize an army of healthcare professionals that will provide you capital advice, use your product, the evangelist for your product, and get them around your social mission rather than being so obsessed with getting venture capital funding. Okay. Well, thanks, Lawrence. It's been really exciting. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Digital Health Entrepreneurship with Lawrence Gerard. Real quick, if you think that more people should be hearing these episodes, would you mind leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite app? That is the best way for the fancy podcast algorithms to know that they should share this show with more people. Thank you so much. And make sure that you join us on tomorrow's episode where we're going to dive into how to prevent chronic disease and diabetes. We'll see you tomorrow.